All right, I got here a 2015 Transit. It says it it's spraying gas and stinks like gas. So it was in a different shop and they replaced, I think, the injector and then the computer. And I'm not sure what else. And then it came to the shop and they called me. So let's just see, let me get a scan going. I did turn it on for a second, it runs really bad. Okay, I'm just gonna save a report. Okay, so we got eight codes on the PCM. B camera shaft position actuator A control circuit open. Cylinder six injector A circuit open. Detected random misfire. Misfire in one, five, and six. Cannot bleed out fuel tank vacuum. So let's see what should we do here. Okay, let me first listen to it run. Okay. So it's missing like crazy. I don't know if you could tell in the video, but if you watch the RPM gauge, it's bouncing a little bit. Now they said it stinks like fuel. Let me go see while well, it's running. Just want to see what's coming out of the exhaust. It does smell pretty fuely, but it doesn't look like it's straight fuel. Usually there's a lot more white smoke. Just want to see if anything's unplugged. Yeah, number six is unplugged. Let's plug it in. It definitely makes a difference. Let me see if now it's shooting fuel. Maybe they thought it was spraying the whole time. That's why it's unplugged. I don't know. But it definitely makes, it gets worse when I unplug it. So. Let me just plug it in. Yeah, I really don't want to get distracted by what they're saying. So let me stop here for a second. Let me clear the codes. I want to see what comes back. Because I think it runs a lot smoother with it plugged in. All right, so let me shut the car. Key on, shut the door to get rid of the dinger. All right, let's clear the DCs. All right, PCM, enter. Okay, read four codes, continuous. Okay, no codes, let's start it up. All right, it's a whole lot smoother. It's not even shaking now. Well, it's still idling high. Let's wait till it lowers the idle. All right, we got here. B camshaft actuator A. Control circuit open. Bank one. P0013. Let's go into the live data. Intake camshaft desired mine is actual. That will be the difference. Intake A camshaft. Bank one and bank two. And let's go get the exhaust. Same thing. Desired minus actual one and two. Okay. Let's graph this. Alright, desired minus actual bank one is 43 degrees off. Bank one. So this is B is bank one, okay, is way off. Exhaust bank two went off once. 
and the intakes are pretty much on. Oh, let's rev it up, see what happens. All right, I'm getting a lot of RPM and the thing stays the same. It actually dropped out for a second. Yes, yeah, so this is way off. This is minus 44 degrees. Is that what it's for? Bank one, desired minus actual. Let's go to full codes. Okay, so we have B camshaft position actuator A, control circuit open. So let's say bank two A is intake or exhaust. I don't know, let's go back to read data stream. It did not save my stuff. There we go. This one's off. Exhaust B. Okay, so exhaust camshaft bank one is off by a lot. Now, is that what we have the code for? Let's look up. Now, let me look up the code definition. P0013. Yeah, bank one. This is what we have way off. The DTC sets when a lower high voltage on the VCT12 circuit is detected. The test fails if the voltage exceeds a calorie limit for a calibrated amount of time. So, VTC12 circuit open. VTC12 circuit short to voltage, short to ground. V power circuit open. Damage variable camshaft timing bank one solenoid two. Okay, so, so what it's saying here is it's this cannot come from all, timing off. So this looks like it's actually just a bad solenoid. It says go to pinpoint test HK. All right, I have to check this. So this is which one? Exhaust camshaft bank one. Alright, so one is the covered side. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have bank one exhaust. So let's go look at this. See if I can see the wiring. If not, I'll own it from the front. So this is bank one. Oh, right here. These are the two things. It shouldn't be too hard to test. Um these are the solenoids right here. This one and this one. Now, which one's the exhaust? This is the exhaust. All right, so this is saying we have an issue. All right, so let's shut the engine. We're gonna ohm out the solenoid and we're gonna test power and ground on this right here. Okay, let me pop this off. So this is the exhaust right here. Let me just get this hose out of the way. Okay, that's disconnected. Now, you know, does this come off easily? It's just this and that. Okay, I'm just gonna take this off, make my life a little easier. Okay, let's get these guys on. All right, those are connected. Now, I'm just gonna connect the ohm meter. Between the two of them. Oh, we have like nine ohms. So let me go back to that chart. See what it said. Yeah, okay, so it wants us to check the resistance between it. 
and it should be 5 to 14 ohms and we have 9 ohms so that's in spec now we're just going to go and test it quickly This is power, and then this side will be hooked straight to the component. And the other side will ground. Okay, this is ground, and now we're just going to touch it. Now this one should be ground, and I definitely hear a click. Okay, I just want to compare it to the other one. Okay, so I got these pins in over there. Now I'm doing the same test. I just want to see if I can feel a difference in the click. That's ground. This will be power. Feels the same to me. Okay. Now, we're just going to test power at this thing. I'm going to put Wait, this is spread apart. Hold on. I'm just doing a pin drag test to make sure the terminal over here is not spread apart. I definitely feel some drag. That's good. This one's a little looser, but it's still fine. Let me just compare it to this guy. Okay, let's check this one. Yeah, it feels the same. Okay. So, I'm assuming pin drag is good. Now, let's see. We should have power. I need a diagram now. Okay. Alright, let me pull up a diagram. Just do one more of these. Diagrams. Powertrain management. Engine controls. Okay. Ambient air. Variable camshaft timing bank two. Bank one solenoid. Solenoid two is green and Okay, so it's this one. Green and orange white. Let's see how this thing's controlled. Alright, so this is definitely the green wire connects here to the splice and it must get power constantly or when the ignition's on. Yeah, it gets power from fuse 36, which is powered from this power chain control module relay. Okay. So that gets power on fuse 36, which will power up this green wire right here. So let me get a test light and we're going to check that. Okay, we're going to ground it right here. And if I hit a power, it lights up. Okay, good. So, let me turn the key on. And I need a little front probe over here on the green wire. We should have power here. 
Now we do. Good. Now on this, I'm assuming we should see a flickering test light if I put it between the two of them. Um, or, hold on, how else can I do this? I should probably put a scope on it, see if it grounds it. Alright, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a scope on this right here. Okay, so right here. We'll put a scope. Let me connect this again. Okay, I really need to put that other part back on. Actually, before that, I should see power, at least to know if my wiring is good, on this because it should be going through the coil. Not. Why wouldn't I see power? Grounded. It could be this test light's too strong and it's grounding it. So let me get a. You know, where's my multimeter? It's right here. Let's just connect my multimeter. Volts DC. We'll put this here. And we'll put this on ground. And I do not have good voltage. Is that thing constantly grounded? Um, let's put this on power. This thing's being constantly grounded. Yeah. You see that? This is a constant ground. I don't think that should be like that. I mean, this thing's actuated the whole time. Hold on. So now, let's check it on the other guy. So this. Should have, the purple wire should have 12 volts. It's not grounded. If we go here, it power see that and it's not okay i didn't explain this well right now this green wire over here has power it should be going through the coil and coming out on this purple wire so i should be able to see power on it so i'm connecting my test light to battery ground if i touch a power it lights up right here i should have power i have power because this one's good right and if i put a multimeter on it i'll, I'll see power 12.23 volt, two, two volts, right? So this side's good. Now this is the bad side. So on this side, we have power. I'm grounding my thing, I have power right here. Now I'm going on the control side. Now, if I touch my test light, I should have power. And I don't, but watch this. If I switch to battery power, I technically should see nothing. Instead, I'm seeing a good pathway to ground. That means the control wire is constantly grounded the whole time. So that thing, that's why this thing's phased to the full amount, to the full amount and that's why the timing's off. And that's why we're getting this code also. All right, now we gotta find the short. Um, okay, I'm gonna unplug the computer. The problem is the computer's all the way down here. What? Where is the computer? Oh, it's right here. It's different than the one I was just working on. Okay, this is easier to get to. I'm just going to take this out of the way, and then we should get to the harness right here. Okay, I lifted up this phone container, and here's the computer. So, what I want to do is, um, let me set this back up, that I have my test light going from battery positive to here. Sorry, from battery... Positive. Right, to right here. Now, this is lit up 
right now. That means this is a good pathway to ground. So what I want to do is I want to disconnect the computer. All right, one's disconnected. Didn't do anything. See, test light's still lit. All right, number two's disconnected. It's still lit. And now number three is disconnected and it's still lit. So we have a direct short to ground somewhere and it's not in the computer. That's good news, I guess. Not that it's gonna be easy to find now. Let's just follow this harness. Now we'll be able to do a wiggle test. So the harness comes right over here. No, so you see, as I wiggle here, it looks like it's moving a drop. Turn this off so you can see it better. It's like flickering. All right, I'm gonna go all the way back over here. Ah, right here, okay. It's on, off, on. I'm all the way down over here where it's touching the valve cover. See that? Right here. Off, on, off, on. Okay, now that it fell off, so I have no idea. It's really, really windy out here. Oh boy, it's like I'm blowing away. Okay. Okay, let me get a better test light that will stay in. So right here. And then run a wire from battery positive. Let's get rid of this test light. To right here. Right now it's off. Is that in good? Okay, that wasn't in good. All right. So now we have a short. Let's go testing now. Somewhere right here. Okay, right now, when I have it fully lifted up over here, it can't short. I put it back down, it shorts. So I do feel metal here. All the way down here. All right, he came out to help me hold down the wire in different spots while I wiggled. And pretty much, I think I have it narrowed down to on top of the engine. It feels like it's on the valve cover. On this valve cover over here, there's like a screw right there. When I'm pushing it onto the screw, I'm almost sure that's the actual short right here. I don't know if you can tell. You can't. It's too dark. Sorry. My hand is all the way in the back behind the intake. And it's right there. I'm pushing it against the screw. I'm taking it off. And I held it down. He wiggled past it. Didn't change. So I'm assuming it's right here. So we got to get this intake off. And see if we can find it. Okay. So I got the intake off. And right here is where I think the issue is. See right now the light's off. I have it connected. Right here. There's exposed wires. Yeah, just get that set up. Yeah, there's definitely exposed wires over there. Right there. See that? That little wire? I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. It touches that screw. It touches that screw and it lights up. Okay, so now I want to get a picture of that for you. I'm just going to have to flip the camera around. Right there, I see the copper right there. Okay, I got to take this tape back and fix that wire. So right there is the wire, the orange and white wire. And if you look, 
And if you look right there, there's bare copper. Let me take the camera off so you can see. Right here you can see there's the copper from the red and white wire, uh, the orange and white wire. So I'm gonna fix this up, put everything back together, and this car should be good to go. Now, once I got it apart, it's actually um, two wires. This is the wire for the solenoid, and there's also a yellow or a, I don't know, maybe it's brown, maybe it's the other side, I don't know, another wire. So I'm gonna have to fix both these up, wrap it in new Tesla tape, and somehow put something on the screw to keep it away from it and then put the intake back on and then it should be good to go okay there was like two more wires that looked a little suspicious which i taped up they weren't like ripped through at all just the insulation was a little bit covered i put tesla tape all along this thing for now i'm going to do more i'm going to put um loom over here okay i put some split loom around this that's where the um the screw was hitting it and now i'm going to put some tape just to make sure it doesn't fall off and put this whole car back together all right, I got the whole intake back on. Everything's connected as far as I can tell. All these hoses. All right, let's go see what happens when we start this thing up. Let's put the can. Um, Redate the stream. Let's just see what happens. Start up. All right, it's running. There's no engine light. It seems to be running fine. Let's go get the data pins that we want. There's the actual. Okay. And everything's good. So there was definitely those shorts. Um, I don't know. It could be there's more in this harness. I don't think so. I mean, this is all I found. The light, I tried for like 10 minutes. Played around with the wire. I'm not getting any other shorts. So I'm going to call this a fix. Car seems to run fine, revs up nicely, stays within range, you know, plus one. All right, thanks for watching.